Welcome back, you beautiful, beautiful people. Today, we're going to be covering mixing. For all two of you who hate the slightly long intros, you can skip to this point to start the tutorial. If you haven't subscribed already, what are you doing? Hit that button. If this video gets a thousand likes in a week, I'll release a free MIDI construction kit or something. You want this kit. Major shout out to Desmond Anderson and Looney. They are the winners of the Amazon gift card giveaway. Desmond Anderson and Looney, please comment your emails in the comment section below and I'll reach out to you with your prize. Another shout out to the comment winner. Comment below for a chance to be featured in the next video. And one more very necessary shout out to all of you. The wonderful and loyal people who slowly allow me to turn my passion into a career. I'm either a professional that is constantly hindered by music production or a music producer who is constantly hindered by his profession. As I figure out which I am, you guys support me every chance you get. And for that, I am so grateful. So grateful in fact that I have a free kit for you guys to show my appreciation. It's called Cinnabar Island and it has 10 melody loops inspired by Jaden Smith, Travis Scott, Frank Dukes, and Q Beats. And this free drum kit called Hydro Pump with over 50 high quality drum samples. You can use these to practice everything you learned in this video. And if you like the sounds, then you can check out one of my new big boy kits like Paradigm 2 with 88 high fidelity 808 and sub bass samples. Oh, and the centerfold drum kit and super potion loop kit are free for 24 hours. So hurry, 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 hurry. Love you. Okay, for this tutorial, we will be using this nameless beat made specifically for this purpose. It was made using the Killishy loop from my new Hyper Potion loop kit. as well as sounds from my new Canto League drum kit. I left the beat completely raw because I wanted this tutorial to be the first time that I'm mixing it. So you'll have the privilege of watching me fuck up. I'll play the beat once through now. This tutorial is separated into four quick sections. Well, sort of quick. Melody mixing, low frequency drum mixing, mid frequency drum mixing, and high frequency drum mixing. The sections will be presented in the order that I just named them because that's usually how I do my mix downs. You can move around the video using these timestamps, which can also be found in the description and in the pinned comment. So before we start anything, soft clipper on the master. I explained soft clipping in a previous video on mixing kicks, so I won't do it again here. 
I've always clipped my master, but I used to do it with the fruity limiter. Recently, I've found the fruity soft clipper to be a much more effective way to add crunch to my drums. For this melody, I won't do too much outside of what I already showed in the melody creation tutorial. A card or a notification to that video should pop up shortly in the top right corner of your screen. But I'll try to better explain what I'm using and why. I'll try to do this to the best of my ability for each section. I'll start by playing the melody. Then I'll add a parametric EQ. I'll flip to the 20 Hertz plus 18 K Hertz cut preset and move these two fixed notches until frequencies below 100 Hertz and above 12 K Hertz have been cut out. I found that for almost all melodies, these frequencies are unnecessary and only serve to muddy the overall mix. The melody's frequencies are displayed by these flashing red lights. The brighter the light, the stronger the melody is in that frequency. You can mark what you are filtering out by following the numbers at the bottom of the equalizer, and you can look at the top left of your screen in the hint panel for a more precise estimate. After that, I'll add a second parametric EQ and leave it on the default setting. I'll only drag down band 4 just a bit and have it apex around 1k. I usually do this to soften some of the frequencies between 500 and 2k hertz, where a lot of my drum sounds will be hitting, but I don't always do this. Next, I'll add some flanging. Hilarious word, powerful tool. Now, I don't understand it completely, but I've come to know flanging as an audio effect that adds a delayed version of an input signal back into itself. This can be used to create a bunch of different effects such as detune, which can make melodies sound less automated and more samplish. You dig? I like the detune effect in particular, so that's what I'll show y'all here. I'll fire up Fruity Flanger, which comes stock with FL Studio. I'll turn the delay, phase, feed, and dry knobs all the way down and turn the wet knob all the way up. From this point, you can just mess with the depth and rate knobs until the melody is detuned to your liking. Just be sure to leave every other knob as is. I'll fuck around with this for a bit while playing the melody. Of course, we'll add some reverb. I'll use the large hall setting to add some ambience to my melody. I'll turn down the bass knob because who the fuck once reverb on their bass frequencies. Then I'll reduce the size and wet just a bit to tighten everything up. Lastly, I'll adjust the reverb mix knob until I feel okay with the saturation of the effect. Next, I'll bring the melody down in the mix. Negative 10 dB or anything near is usually my go-to, but this will just depend a lot on what you want to get out of your beat. Just make sure that your melody is heard, but not clipping or clashing with anything else. Lastly, I'll add a fruity limiter. This will be used for sidechaining the kick to the melody, which will be done in the next section. A quick note. Whenever you're using a fruity limiter to sidechain, be sure to turn the ceiling all the way up to prevent the waveform from being squashed down. This doesn't always happen to channels that are sidechained, but performing the habit of always maxing your ceiling will keep you from making a silly mistake in post-production. Low frequency drums are sounds like kicks, 808s, and sub basses. The best sounds. In this particular beat, there are two, a kick and an 808. Let's begin with the 808. First, with the melody playing, we'll adjust the 808 until it is hitting around negative 4 or negative 5 dB. As I stated in my first 808 tutorial, most industry sub sounds exist in the negative 4 to negative 7 dB range. For those of you who asked where I got that information, TM88 told me in a session a little over a year ago. I didn't question him at all. It is a feeling thing, so feel free to experiment, but I rarely venture outside of the negative 4 to negative 7 decibel range. Next, I'll add a parametric EQ2 to the bus and use it to cut out frequencies below 25 Hz and above 2K Hz. 
This won't affect the tone of your 808 too much, but it will be good for cleaning up some of the muddiness that comes with using beefy 808 samples. Be sure to check that your 808 is still hitting at your specified decibel range. Next I'll add some light distortion by adding a fruity fast distortion to the bus, flipping this switch from A to B, and turning the mix down until it sounds good. I usually add slight distortion to my 808s to make them more noticeable through smaller speakers. A little goes a long way. Again, be sure to check that adding fruity fast distortion has not changed the decibel level of your 808. If it has, level it off using the channel fader. Just like we did with the melody, we are going to add a fruity limiter to the end of the 808 bus, making sure to max out the ceiling. For the kick, we'll just level it to 0 dB. This is a good working point for most kicks. It's loud, but I like loud kicks. If you don't, anything from negative 1 to negative 3 decibels should suffice. Anything less would make your kick a low class warrior. Don't let your kick be a low class warrior. Turn your fucking kicks up, man. Next, I'll sidechain the kick to the melody and the 808. I demonstrated how to do this in a previous tutorial, so I won't do it in this tutorial. But I'll shut up for a second while I do it here and let this snippet from that tutorial explain. This right here, this is the fucking sauce. A lot of people are scared of sidechaining because when it's explained, it's made way too complicated. Okay, all you need to do is go to your mixer and find the track where you have your kick. Select it by clicking it and make sure that it's highlighted. Once you've done that, right click the send switch on your 808 sample mixer track and select sidechain to this track. After that, go to the mixer track linked to your 808 and open an instance of Fruity Limiter. Switch it from limiter to compressor by clicking comp and then right click this sidechain selection menu and select your kick sample. Then turn the knee all the way up. As I stated before, the point of sidechaining is to reduce the volume of the 808 sample while the kick is playing. So now I'm just going to start playing the pattern while adjusting the threshold knob until the kick is pressing down the 808 at a level that makes me comfortable. Let's listen to what we've got so far. Gorgeous. Once I get to this point, I usually turn the melody off and mix the rest of the drums. I consider middle frequency sounds to be things like claps, snares, and rim shots. They usually do their best work in the 500 to 2000 hertz range. I almost always level these off at about negative 4 decibels. Any sound that hits on the third beat I leave completely dry in terms of effects. any other mid-level sounds I consider available for manipulation. In this tutorial, I'll add some reverb to the accent perk I have. I'll use a similar setting to what was used for the melody and just adjust it in the mix accordingly.
to be honest, the only thing I do for sounds like hi-hats, open hats, and shakers is make sure that they hit around negative 15 decibels. I rarely do anything else. Like, I've made maybe 10,000 beats and I can count on one hand the amount of times I've put reverb on a hi-hat. Shit like that is cool, don't get me wrong, but I usually leave that up to the engineer and the artist to decide. What if they don't want reverb on the hi-hats? Spoilers, most people don't. I try to violate my clients in as few ways as possible. The 808s are already enough. To be honest, that's it. Like, if you want a basic mixing template for making a hard ass trap beat, that's it. I'm going to arrange the beat off screen and let it rock out for the outro. Thank you so much for watching and a major shout out to you if you made it all the way through. Be sure to check out the new free and premium kits. Drop a like if you learned anything from this and subscribe to stay up to date with future tutorials and kit releases. Share this with at least one producer who could benefit from some mixing tips and invite them to the dope content only family. Finally, I have some dope merchandise on the way, so comment a lightning bolt emoji below for a chance to win a dope content only wristband. I'll pick a few winners in a day or two. Oh, and next month, get ready. I think I've talked y'all to death at this point, so let's wrap this up and get out of here. Again, thank you so much for stopping by. Stay healthy, stay happy, and never stop creating. Just make sure it's dope content only. Till next time, probably in a month. Peace. <laughs>